Hey guys, Derek here. We are back watching another episode of My Hero Academia. This is uh, season four, episode six, I believe. Last episode was almost entirely focused on Kirishima, otherwise known as Red Riot. Um, yeah, I thought it was really good that they spent time expanding on a secondary character um, and just allowing the the universe and the the squad of all the students to kind of fill itself out instead of only focusing on like the top four or five characters in the show um which a lot of shows fall into that trap so yeah we were able to spend some time with kirishima uh he got a he showed off his new ultimate move which is just like almost going super saiyan with being hard <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. Um, yeah, he just like wills his body to get harder everywhere and then punches people really hard. And that's his thing. Uh, and he was like low key kind of blowing up on social media after. Everyone was like, dang, Red Riot, who'd that be? I'm a, that sounded dumb. <laughs> They're like, I'm gonna follow him uh, cause he's cool. And then we, spend some time with Overhaul um, and um, Shigaraki. They kinda somewhat formalized their team up, sorta. Um, but they, they made it abundantly clear that it was not one working under the other, it was a partnership. Um, and they, uh, he kind of a little bit expanded on his plan, overhauled it, um, using the bullets that take away powers. He also developed a serum that boosts powers. So that was shown off with the little knife guy that uh, Kirishima fought. And then we learned, like, there was a snippet of Kirishima's backstory that was like, I don't even, I don't remember anything about that. Like, it, did his family die or something? Like, it was like randomly super dark and sad and you were like, what is this? And then it like moved on. So yeah, um, I don't know what this episode is gonna be about. It's called An Unpleasant Talk. Um, I think it'll shift back to the main the main characters that we usually focus on, like Midoriya, Bakugo, All Might, um, those type of characters, and then yeah, we'll we'll see what happens after that. But let's just jump right into the episode. Um, before we do, make sure to like this video, subscribe if you want to see more reactions from My Hero Academia. Uh, if you want to see the full-length reaction, head down to Patreon. And a reminder, this is not a market substitute. Watch the original episode wherever it is legal. Thank you very much. Let's jump into it. What is this, like an all-hands-on-deck type? You must be serious. I feel like you should, eventually should have just been like, are we going to the same place? <laughs> and just have everyone be like, yeah, man. It's not like you're being followed. Thanks to the information provided by all of you, our investigation has progressed substantially. We've invited you all here for a joint conference to share the intel we've acquired regarding the Yakuza group Chieha Saikai and what we believe they might be planning. Hold on, I feel like I'm missing something really important here. Shie Oeno? Something went wrong with this. An accident involving a gang of thieves called the Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. The, the Reservoir Dogs? An accident in my capacity as a Night Eye agent's sidekick. I began following leads to see it. Centipeder? It 
seems useful. What is that static shock? <laughs> Looks like static shock. Tamaki was shot, and the bullet contains some kind of drug I've never heard of before. One that destroys quirks. Destroys quirks? Oh, what? Tamaki, you're okay, right? Yeah, the stuff wore off while I slept. Oh, I was like, I've got this cow hoof and everything. Dang. <laughs> Doesn't seem to function exactly like my erasure does, since I'm not actually attacking the quirk directly. What we call a quirk is an extraordinary addition to an ordinary human body. Those additions are collectively referred to as quirk genes. I can shield those genes and temporarily block their expression, but I don't actually damage them. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's probably pretty good if that was permanent, that would suck. The substance from the bullet, we discovered something that made me sick to my stomach. It contained human blood and cells. Oh, smells like something out of a scary movie. Why is it? In other words, that point came from a person. They were all like, What is this monster doing? Young head, Chisaki Quirk Overhaul. With this power, he can disassemble things and then reassemble them. A quirk that allows him to completely break down matter, and a bullet that can okay. break down quirks. <sighs> yeah, they are uh, probably pretty happy they did not fight him. But also really disappointed in, in themselves for not trying to save her. But when Mirio and Midoriya encountered her, they noticed there were bandages wrapped around her arms and legs. Could he really do something so horrific? Unfortunately, yes. In the world of superhumans, if you can dream it, you can do it. Hold on. What are they talking about? We're wondering if this Chisaki bastard is turning his daughter's body into bullets and selling them like Mark. To be clear, we aren't certain that he's actually selling the bullets. That At point, their efficacy appears to be questionable. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. Possible that they're still world's greatest hero. Not even close. Save a million people? I couldn't even save her. What the? We'll get Ari away from him next time, and we'll protect her. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. We won't let her down. Look, you kids want to talk big? That's fine. I would like you all to investigate the... each coordinate on this map. It is the <laughs> logical way to narrow down. That's so many places across of all of Japan. Didn't expect someone who worked with All Might for so long to be such a careful planner. Let's just go bring him down! While we're taking our sweet time, that abused girl's out there crying somewhere! You can't do this like All Might would. That's why we must be meticulous about our strategy. Yeah, you're not All Might. Don't try and be All Might. That's <laughs> right. Excuse me. I've got a question. I don't know the specifics of your quirk, Night Eye. Feel free to correct. But from what I've heard of it, your quirk foresight allows you to see into the future. So why not use it on us? That's logical. Sorry, but I cannot. Why? My foresight has some limitations. I need a full 24 hours between activations. That means I get one person, okay. and then I'm spent for the rest of the day. Additionally, the future is played in... That should still provide more than enough information to be useful, don't you think? And yeah. Let me explain why you can't do it. What if I saw imminent death in the near future? Worse. Merciless demise. He's referencing All Might. Because of what happened with All Might. Please stop! If you continue like this, I swear, you'll face off against a villain and die on speed! 
He believes that if he doesn't see it, it might not happen. Okay, yeah. He thinks if he sees one of them dying, and then they do die, that that will use, or that will count as evidence towards All Might dying. And he doesn't want to accept that. That's such like a huge leap immediately. <laughs> Just because she has bandages? I mean, if that's true, that's messed up, but... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. It's not his head. I'll only say this once, in case it gives you a little peace of mind. Just because you didn't hold on to her this time, doesn't mean you didn't give Eric hope. So keep looking forward. Right! Mister, I saw one! I said I'm a racer here. I'm your man for the rest of my life, a racer. Not if interesting. <laughs> He's so inspiring. Yeah, I know. He's such a good teacher. Of course. You sent Midoriya to me in the hopes that he would help mend my relationship with All Might. I thought it would give you an excuse to talk at least. When you get old, it's your job to help stubborn youngsters. So the kid, what are your honest thoughts about him? I think he and All Might are very similar. Especially when it comes to the madness living deep within. The one I could never understand. I see that in them both. The madness? Like, the desire to save everyone no matter what? Or just like, are they mentally ill? <laughs> Is that what he thinks? I don't know. Slaps her in the face. It's like an abusive parent that just buys them tons of stuff. Okay, that episode all took place in pretty much one room. Uh, yeah, it was an unpleasant conversation that they had to have about like what needs to happen. Um, very much not an action filled episode because there was no action at all. Um, it was very like making sure everybody that's been involved so far has all the information about what needs to happen going forward um, in order to stop this guy. Um, there were a few leaps in logic there uh, when they were like, oh, she has bandages and he has the ability to 
like disassemble things and reassemble them he must be turning her body into bullets it's like what how do you like how do you make that that immediate judgment of like this is what's happening <laughs> like that part was a little iffy for me of like that that hero who they didn't say his name i don't think but he just like automatically assumed that everybody in the room knew that they thought their her body was being turned into bullets but like i don't know if any reasonable person would have expected that <laughs> um i mean once you think about it like it's definitely a possibility and it might like the fact that they mentioned it there's a good possibility that that's the route that it is going down but like if they hadn't said that or brought that up i don't think anyone would have been like oh wow i wonder if they're turning her body into bullets <laughs> like a v any viewers no viewers would have thought that immediately um yeah they but so they brought in all these heroes and their understudies of various locations throughout japan um so that they could inform them of what's going on and then be like, hey, we need you to investigate these areas. Because that was like all of Japan. There was like places in each little section of Japan, it looked like. And that's a lot of area for them to cover. Um, and the fat guy wanted to just go after him like All Might would, but he's not All Might. Like he can't just like launch himself a billion miles an hour and take out all of these little places like that it wouldn't work um so like you can't really try and solve a problem like all might would because all might's not here anymore really like all might's not here like big all might the hero all might isn't here and the teacher all might's still around but like you can't solve things like the hero all might if he's not here and you're not him so i, I agree with night eyes um plan of like taking it not slow but like making sure you're prepared and have the information before you go ahead so like having a plan that being said i i think he could be a little more lax on his uh usage of his quirk like i mean why not use it on one of those heroes like i think i agree with eraser head where it would it would be helpful like even if you can only use it on one person every 24 hours you use it on whoever is like not going to be in town like they're going to be leaving so you use it on them um and see if they're gonna encounter something over there and then uh 24 hours later you can use it on someone that's in town and see if they're gonna encounter someone um and like even if if they're gonna die you, that that's more information like i feel like he assumes that if they die and he used it and saw it on them like that he would be causing it or responsible but i don't i don't feel like that's true um and he believes that it's like it supports it's like supporting evidence that all might will die so if he sees one of them die in his vision and then he informs them of that and then they still die then that just like further reinforces his opinion that um that he can't save all might which i mean i can understand how that would make him feel poorly but i think in this situation he needs to put aside his own feelings and just work for the betterment of the situation um and then mirio and midoriya are clearly uh very upset that they didn't save this girl because now they know that she's being used for something um which is you know that's awful but i think given given how their encounter with him ended 
and what they did and didn't know at the time, I don't think they can be too down on themselves. Um, I mean, they also, though, made good points when they were kind of, like, talking down to themselves of being, like, I couldn't even save this girl. Like, how am I supposed to save a million people? And, like, world's greatest hero, world's greatest hero would have saved her. I mean, those are valid points, but, like, only a little bit. Um, yeah, but I don't know. It's, it's, a it's a complicated situation. Um, and it, they're lucky that they have Eraserhead as a teacher because he, he was able to speak, speak some truth into them where they're not like hating on themselves. He could, he's like, all right, all you can do now is look forward and like, take the situation as it is. And you didn't save her this time, you may have given her hope, which at the end, you kind of see that he, he, they did give her hope. She, she was laying in bed thinking on the situation being like, wow, no one's ever like treated me that way. Like no one's really cared about me ever. So Izuku definitely planted some seeds in her mind of like this guy could save me like she's got some hope now which is good and she might fight back against overhaul's plan um which is super cool i think it's i think they do a good job of not immediately jumping to that like being like oh she's kind of like fight back now like what and then she starts it like they take their time building and setting up things in a way that feels plausible and still satisfying. Um, and I think that's, they do a really good job, but they also don't do it in a way where it's like taking 50 episodes to get to a certain point. Um, a lot of animes f fall into that trap because a lot of animes, like when they were airing on TV, um, like they needed and at one episode a week, so it was like 52 episodes a year. So they used all those episodes to tell a story that sometimes took a long time. Um, but with these like uh, coming out online and, and stuff like that, like you don't need to draw it out. You can just be like, you can tell those stories in the pace that they need to be told. Um, and that's super cool. Um, I also, I think it's really cool that this this show can get away with telling like an anime action show can get away with telling an entire story's episode or an entire episode story sitting at a conference table in one room like almost doing a table read for the actors like and also save some money uh i mean i know this is based off of uh manga but you know that <laughs> that does save a little bit of money because drawing action and animating fight scenes is significantly more expensive than just like animating them sitting around a table. Um, and I think it's a testament to how much work they've put into the world and the characters that we don't get bored when they're just sitting there talking around a table. So props to this show for that as well. Um, I'm excited for next week. Looks like they might actually, uh, move forward with like fighting this person a little bit, like they're doing some investigative work and then they are gonna maybe make a move. Um, yeah, Deku and, and Lamillion will be making some sort of moves. It looks like they're, cause they're both very frustrated. I, like mirio's like demeanor was like very intense and focused like he's not happy anymore like i think he's kind of had his uh worldview shifted and shaken a little bit where before he was always just like so happy because he's gonna be the guy that saves a million a million people but now like he's kind of had that idea in his head kind of cracked a bit and so maybe maybe he becomes a little less happy and more of like a straight 
like normal character, so to speak. Um, I think that would benefit him actually, because if he was just one note happy all the time, he wouldn't be a very interesting character. Um, so it's nice to see that they're giving more depth to who Mirio is. Um, I'm excited to see how he handles that. Um, cause I think I, we know a lot about Midoriya and how he handles things, but we don't know a lot about, um, like any of the big three, like how they go about these things and like what their plans are and how they think about these things. So it'll be cool to see that in the future as well. Um, other thoughts? I don't know. I don't think I have any other thoughts on this episode. Um, let me know what you thought of the episode down below in the comments. Um, that's always fun to interact with you guys on what you think about the show and what, what you think is going to happen next. I mean, if you've read the manga, don't, don't spoil it, but like, you know, talk to, talk to me, say, say what you feel about the episode. Um, what are you excited for? What do you think is going to happen next? But, yeah, if you want to see more um, reactions to the show, uh, subscribe. That would help a lot. I, in either corner. I don't remember which corner it is. I think it's that one. Who knows? Uh, leave a like on the video. Um, helps my videos get sh uh, seen more by other people. Um, yeah. Other than that... Uh, I'm Derek. This has been Season 4, Episode 6 of My Hero Academia, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.